Okay, now here we talk about avoiding the dreaded spun rod bearings or to avoid spinning your rod bearings, we will talk about the rod bearing clearances, even the rod side clearances that's oftentimes not even checked. And you know, this is a chain reaction from a cause and effect of all the small things that could lead to a spun rod bearings. And of course, getting the right clearances means lighter oil pump for more power. Even a few tricks done by four piston themselves. So you don't have to spend extra. All you gotta do is spend it wiser and we'll show you what are the things you need to check in order to build a better engine. Now here is your factory B20 PH3 connecting rod and an aftermarket H-beam connecting rod, which is a speed factory actually. All right, so let me show you this. Okay, now here, look at the factory B20 in LS bearing. It has an oil hole on the intake side to squirt oil on the skirt to add a little bit of better oiling for reduced friction. Okay, so that's, you know, it's on the oil flow from the rod journals, bearings, and then it squirts out. And here is a B16, or sorry, B20 and LS bearing, ACL race bearing. Okay, let me show you. As you can see, it has an oil hole just like the B20 rod bearings, right? So that's good. And we actually don't have a B16 ACL, but we had to buy a B16 Taiho OEM bearing just to show you guys here, B16, you can see, right? Okay, now let's show you the bearings itself. Okay, it's still sealed, see? We actually bought this just to show you guys. All right, wait, let me open this uh, shrink wrap or vacuum wrap, whatever they call it. Okay, wait. Oh, the plastic is too thick. That's the interesting part, you know. The plastic wrapper on the OEM bearings is always too thick. But hey, we, we can't complain. Or we won't complain, right? Okay, here. See? Now, compared to the B20 bearing, let's remove it to show you guys. Both bearings fit from one another. But if you use the B16 bearings onto the B20, you it's not just the oiling that you're reducing on the skirts and the underside of the pistons for cooling, but also you're restricting flow. You, you restrict flow if you're restricting the connecting rod bearing oil exit. This way, the main bearings have a hard time flowing into the rods. And yes, that may cause your spun rod bearings, all right? See, it's covered. That's no good, all right? Now let's remove it, but it fits, right? It fits just as good as a B20 rod bearing, but there's no oil hole. So I know locally that's a mistake that's often happening and they're melting pistons like a cast or even a hyperotectic pistons. It's going to, you know, need a little bit more oiling. Here's the aftermarket ones that uses forged pistons. And hey, look, this is perfect. But you can still use the ACL B20 B18 LS rod bearings here. That is no problem. You know, it, it, the bearing would have a hole, but the rod is still closed. So that's perfectly fine. All right. Here. We're gonna show you the ACL B20 LS bearing. It has a hole, just like the B20 OEM. And the reason why we bring this up is because a lot of local shop owners who actually either claim to be a builder, nothing against that, but have their workers build the engine. Look at this. 
The B16A connecting rod bearing is R462H, which is standard, right? And if you look up here for the B20B, the rod bearing is either 454H or R462 with, that says there without hole. And I've never seen a B20 or a B18LS with the oil squirter, so I don't think the R462H is supposed to be for the B20, but that's, that's what it says in their parts list. And if you think about it, most of the auto supply sellers or employees are not engine builders. So for them, this is correct, but you better watch out, right? I mentioned this because I've seen and heard a lot of locals or a few locals that have melted one up pistons. And if you guys can remember this, this has been running since 2018 and it's been running 12 fives, no problem, even on factory rods and ARP rod bolts. But we ran the correct bearings. So unless you're running 10 seconds to claim that the one up pistons couldn't take it, you got to think again, right? I mean, you know, make sure that you're building something correctly because, hey, customers' money, you know, we got to take care of that. And aside from that, the scope of the flow dynamics or the dynamics of flow, be it liquid or air, there's a principle or at least it's understood that with any restriction, it could be in the middle of the path or towards the end, a restriction increases the force needed to move liquid in you know the flow in this case more restriction means more load or more weight needed to turn our oil pump and that actually robs power but it has to be in sequence because for example if you get too loose of a main bearing then the rod bearing and that means you lose pressure towards the rod bearing so it has to be in an actual order like the main bearing has to be proper clearance and then the rod bearing is okay to, uh, to be a bit looser because that's the exit. So the oil pump feeds the main bearings and then the oil to the rod bearings come from the main bearings. And so the last portion is the rod bearing. So we shouldn't really restrict the exit towards that because then that the main bearings have a difficulty getting pressure from the oil pump or even flow. Look at this trend. As you can see here on the D16 or D series, the main bearings, the one in five are 0007 to 0014 inch, and the two and three and four is 0 0.0009 to 0 0.0017. But look at the rod bearings, 0 0.0008 to 0 0.0015. And the wear limit of the rod bearings is 0 0.0020. So when you look at it, it's actually looser than the main bearings, right? And it's the same thing with the B series and look at this. So the K series, and as you can see, the main bearing to journal oil clearance 1, 2, 4, and 5 is 0 0.0007 to 0 0.0016 of an inch. And the wear limit or the service limit is 0 0.0020. And then, of course, on the number 3 journal is 0 0.0022, the wear limit. And look at the rod journals. As you can see here, the A3 has 0 0.008 to 0 0.0020 of an inch clearance and also the Z1 has 0013 to 0024 of an inch clearance and the service limit is 0 0.0028 so a little more than the K20A3 but both of them the wear limit as you notice is actually a lot more than the wear limit of the main bearings the reason for, for this is because if you get the main bearings too loose the pressure lowers it, it doesn't feed the connecting rod as well as it should. And that's the cause of spun rod bearings. But the thing here is that if you don't have enough clearances on the connecting rod, it, it's a double-edged sword because it gives more load to the oil pump. And on the K series, it accelerates or it makes oil cavitation happen earlier than it should. So this is important. And a lot of times if the main bearings are too loose and you have an oil pressure gauge, it gets low PSI, so you think it's the oil pump. And one thing that may be related or may not be related to it is that if you remember, around five to seven years ago, ACL race bearing has been starting to get become synonymous into building even home builds, right? That's also the same time when people started realizing they need a better oil pump because of their low oil pressure. So 
is it the bearings or the pump or the loose main bearing so it's it's just another added reason for you guys to check everything or get the builder to check everything that's needed because there are no shortcuts when it comes to spending your own money now that we got the oil clearances talk already done now the next one is about the restriction and that's including the rod side play and here's a few pictures of how you can check it you use a filler gauge between the connecting rod and the crank when fully, fully assembled. The factory Honda clearance is 0 0.0012 to 0 0.0014. And here is another single cylinder and you can get it good. And also including a V8, you can see here two rods per journal because even if you get 0 0.0018 to 20 bearing clearance on the connecting rod, if the end play is less than that, it's not going to exit enough, right? That is also why we have this marble tile plate on our wooden workbench because we can actually do this. And I'm, I'm telling you guys, you can do this, but if you have less experience, you can send it to a machine shop. We use a 600 grit sandpaper. We try to flatten the big end and then the 80, 800 grit for the next step. Ideally, you use a flat glass, but of course, at the machine shop, a lathe can do this really good. In, the, in our language, it's torno. They can actually remove 0 0.0001 to get you that much clearance or even more if you want. And a short story for this, sometime around 11 or 12 years ago, back when California Look Forum was still active, I talked to Don Powder, the owner of Powder Machine, the, one that, the ones that make the good connecting rod. Because back then, we snapped a, a Powder X-Beam around 900 wheel horsepower. And I messaged him not to complain about it, just to seek more answers. And this is what he asked me. He asked, what are the main bearing clearances and the rod bearing clearances? I said, we ran ACL race bearings, so it was 18 to 20 thousands, right? And he said, or he asked, what's your rod side plate clearance? And I said, oh, we kept it stock. And his answer, there you go. That's your answer. Because oil flow cannot get in when it's the ex exit is actually restricted. So what cannot go out cannot include what comes in Therefore, it's going to be a hard time for the oil pump and then the oil gets too hot or burnt and we know what happens next, right? And here's the thing. This actually also restricts power. Not many people know this because it's not really talked about, right? And even if you think about it, the B16A and even the B18C type Rs, they have an oil squirter or an oil jet to cool the pistons, right? But they also have a ridge on the side of the rod to further increase the oil exit. This way, it's more efficient and you minimize the load bearing of the oil pump. This way, it's not an added windage or it doesn't eat up horsepower. It makes easier or it makes it easier to make more power. And there's also something called piston guided rods where the rod end play is about 1.5 to even 2 millimeters wide. That's because the piston actually guides the rods as the term goes. The end play on the small end is actually 0 0.0015 or 14. So this way, the big end can be as wide as it can be to minimize restriction. If it's for durability, good. If it's for power, maybe. Because all I know is NASCAR engines uses this frequently. So hey, it probably works, right? And look at this. On the B16 and the ITR, look, it already has an oil jet. But look at this slot here. It adds oil squirting. This way, it actually increases the oil exit from the rod bearings. Here, you can see the, those two slots. It has an oil jet. So Honda did this to be sure and for more potential efficiency by avoiding any chances of being restrictive in power. That's Honda. And yes, sure, some would say when you run forged pistons, the oil jet is not needed. That's true, but that has nothing to do with restricting the oil exit from the rod bearings, right? And if you just pay attention, even four piston doesn't openly share this, but they openly show it and let 
people figure it out. Look at this. This is one of the many engines for piston built. Look at this. You can see on the H beam rods, there is an extra slot, right? But it runs forged pistons, right? And even here, the long rod project that they did, it's forged pistons. But see, there are two slots going towards the pistons. It's for probably for cooling and also increasing the oil exit from the connecting rod. Therefore, your cavitation or the oil pump reaches cavitation point on the RPM a lot higher than usual. That is more efficient and more good in making more power, right? And the funny thing is all of this includes on our regu regular 15K engine builds Look for the locals, okay? So a lot of people wishes to get a, a cheaper option and all that, but they don't realize we blueprint the oil pump. We double check even the rod side plate clearance, even if we're rebuilding a stock engine. We check all of that because there are no shortcuts when it comes to engine building. This way, we make good power. And a lot may wonder, this is still 20% of what we're willing to share because the 80% of what we know, we're going to keep it a secret. This way, we have an upper hand to the locals when it comes to engine builds and making power. This makes it easier for you guys to choose us SRD Motorsports for your next build.